So I've been covering elections for quite some time now on this channel, but never have I seen a Republican do so poorly out of the gate after they just won a Republican primary as I have with Dr. Oz. I mean, he face planted immediately and now he's in a really poor spot and it's still really early. So you can't definitively say that he's going to lose. But regardless, currently, as it stands now, he's losing by a lot and he knows it. In fact, he sent out this email with the subject titled losing by a lot. And in bold letters, he explains to his voters, quote, Dr. Oz is losing by a lot. And it cites a poll that indeed confirms the fact that he is losing by a lot. Now, in an interview on Fox News, the host is going to low-key clown on him for doing so poorly. And uh, in this interview, Dr. Oz is going to not only downplay the fact that he's doing really poorly, but he's also going to be a little bit deceitful about the endorsements that he's received. And he's going to piss off someone in this particular interview. Take a look. You essentially have an open field right now. I'm, jo John Fetterman's not campaigning. Uh, that, that must be a, an enormous advantage for you, at least in the early stage. It seems pretty obvious. Right? I'm working my tail off and I like so the opportunity. If, if that's the case, not to win a race like this would be a shocker. Don't I, you think? I, I think I should be favored. I think I probably am. In fact, in the betting lines, I am. <laughs> but, but I'm not betting on my own race in but, that but way. But that poll suggests you're traveling significantly. It, you know, if you look at that poll, it's fascinating. If Republicans, when they realize that we are a unified party, and that's what I spent this past week doing, traveling from Pittsburgh up to Erie, across to you know, Lancaster, Harrisburg, up to uh, Wilkes-Barre. When you do that, the the, and all the Senate candidates that I was competing against have endorsed me, the party rapidly unifies. Yeah, they did. That already happened in the Democratic Party a month ago go. So it's a time issue. I love the beginning of that video. You know, to not win a race like this would be shocking, don't you think? And then he tries to downplay that poll that he knows is pretty damning by saying, oh, well, you know, we're up in the betting markets and I think that I'm the favorite. But then the host chimes in again saying, uh, but that poll suggests you're trailing significantly. Ouch, that's that's brutal. I mean, this is this is your home turf. You're on Fox News, so if you can't appease them, if you can't please them and convince them, you're in bad shape. But at least he has Sean Hannity, because Sean Hannity has been going out of his way to spread as much propaganda at the behest of Dr. Oz as he possibly can, and maybe that'll help him. But either way, he said something in that particular clip about how the Republicans who ran against him are unifying behind him. Now, I'm not necessarily sure if he misspoke. He wasn't necessarily clear there. But he heavily suggested that all of his GOP primary opponents had coalesced behind him. But that's not actually true. And one of them spoke out against what he's saying here. As CNN's Daniel Dell explains, it is not true that all of Oz's former competitors have endorsed him. While Oz has been endorsed by three of the four other major candidates from the May primary, second place finisher David McCormick, who received about 31.1% of the vote, fourth place Carla Sands, about 5.5%, and fifth place Jeff Bardos, about 5%, Oz has not been endorsed by third place Kathy Barnett, who received about 24 0.7% of the vote. Quote, no, I have not endorsed Oz. He knows that, Barnett said in an interview on Tuesday. She said she wasn't surprised the truth may elude them sometimes given how she said they lied about me during the campaign. That's not all she had to say about Oz. She added that about 70% of Republicans voted against him, despite his endorsement from former President Donald Trump. She argued that Donald Trump won this election for Oz. It wasn't Oz. And even though she said that she was open to eventually endorsing and campaigning for Oz, she also said, I have a lot of issues with Oz and who he presented himself to be. So that's his former opponent calling him out. Now, to be fair to him, when it was evident that she lost and the votes were still being counted, at least the mail-in uh, ballots were still being counted between him and David McCormick, she did say in a CNN interview with Brian Selter that she would likely support the Republican nominee. Having said that, though, she did not explicitly endorse Dr. Oz. Um, now, when CNN reached out and asked him for clarification, they said, I don't know, we're, we're not saying that she endorsed Dr. Oz. We're just saying that Republicans are uniting behind Dr. Oz. But that's not what he's been saying. That's not what he said in that interview. So, um, yeah, Dr. Oz is just a uniquely terrible candidate, and he reminds me of the Republican equivalent of Hillary Clinton. So out of touch, so rehearsed, so desperate to try to find a way to appeal to working people so he cites gas prices and inflation but in actuality this multi-millionaire has been a celebrity now for a very long time has no fucking idea what normal working class americans deal with um now one thing that i've got to point out is part of the reason why i think he's 
losing, aside from the fact that he's a uniquely bad candidate, is his really sharp pivot in the general election. An Axios article published on Tuesday highlights the not-so-subtle ways that Dr. Oz has tried to distance himself from Donald Trump, changing his social media banners, removing mentions of Trump's endorsement from his website and social media, and also in the ads that he's running on Google, he's no longer mentioning that he was endorsed by Trump, and he's just generically referencing the need for Republicans to win a majority in the Senate. And if you just won because of Donald Trump, because his base was galvanized, because he endorsed you— to immediately do this pivot and distance yourself from Trump, I mean, it makes you look like a fraud, right? And we all know that Dr. Oz is a disingenuous, inauthentic fraud. But if you're this obvious, if you're not even at least trying to be less conspicuous here, it's going to turn off voters. Now, again, I don't want to say that his defeat is a foregone conclusion because a lot can change between now and November, and he could just get lucky and ride on the momentum that Republicans have going into the midterms. But still, it's hard to deny that he is one of the worst candidates on the Republican side that I've seen in quite some time. And even he wouldn't deny that he's doing bad because, again, he sent out a mailer saying, I'm losing by a lot. So look, you love to see it. I hope he crashes and burns. Get fucked, Dr. Oz. I hate these celebrities who think that they can jump into politics as if they care about issues affecting working people, as if they have something to offer. You don't have anything to offer. You're a celebrity. Live in your mansion and fuck off. You have everything already. So political power is not something that you need to better your life. I don't know if you're bored. I don't know what it is, Dr. Oz. Take up a fucking hobby. But either way, we don't need you in politics and we don't want you in politics. If you live in Pennsylvania, vote for John Fetterman.